So we've talked about um, two definitions of acids, the Arrhenius and the Bronsted-Lowry definitions. There's a third definition called the Lewis definition. Um, the Lewis model of acids, um, when you think about Lewis dot structures, we're talking about the electrons, right? So the Lewis model is focusing on the transfer of an electron pair. Bronsted-Lowry model was looking at the transfer of a proton. So here we have the acid accepting an electron pair. The Bronsted-Lowry is focusing on the proton. The Lewis model is focusing on this electron pair. The base will be the electron pair donor. So when a hydrogen ion interacts or reacts with an ammonia molecule to become NH4+, this hydrogen ion forms a bond and the electron pair is completely donated by the nitrogen. The hydrogen didn't have an electron to bring in. So this is donating the electron pair, that's the base. So donating negative electrons is kind of like the same as accepting protons, right? One's positive, one's negative, one's accepting, one's donating. So here we have H plus acting as the Lewis acid because it's accepting the electron pair from ammonia. Ammonia is acting as a Lewis base because it's donating an electron pair. This definition is useful because it expands the number of substances that can be considered as acids. So a Lewis acid doesn't even have to have hydrogen in it. So that breaks all the rules we've learned about uh, acids, right? So here we have BF3. You look at that and there's no reason that you should consider that to be an acid, but it is a Lewis acid. So this BF3 has an empty orbital. This does not have an octet, the boron here. Remember, boron and beryllium are the little guys, and they sometimes just have six electrons in their Lewis dot structures. So this has an empty orbital, and it can accommodate this lone pair. And so these two molecules come together. They're called an adduct. So the electron pair from one is being donated to the other, and that's what's holding them together. So Lewis acids will either have empty orbitals or they have the ability to rearrange their electrons to form empty orbitals that can accept electron pairs. We're not going to do a lot with Lewis acids, but in organic chemistry, Lewis acids are much more important. So here are some molecules that can act as Lewis acids. Here we've got aluminum chloride. The aluminum has an incomplete octet here, and so it can form an adduct. This is called a coordinate covalent bond when both of the electrons in that covalent bond come from one atom instead of one from each. Normally we see each atom is sharing one electron, and that's what's forming the covalent bond. This is a coordinate covalent bond because both of those electrons are coming from nitrogen. Here we've got um, boron trichloride and, um, and this ether, um, which actually kind of looks like the ether bunny that we've got on the backboard there, but kind of upside down here. Um, so this oxygen here has two lone pairs. So this lone pair can be donated to the boron boron can, this compound can act as a Lewis acid by accepting an electron pair from that oxygen. Here's an example of molecules that can rearrange to form um, empty orbitals. So here we've got water acting as a Lewis base. So it can, it can donate the electrons. And here we have carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide can act as a Lewis acid. 
How does that work? So here we have the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Um, one of the pairs of electrons in this double bond can shift over and just hang out on the oxygen. And then we can have this lone pair from the oxygen on the water come over here and form that coordinate covalent bond with this carbon. And then what happens is this hydrogen is going to be attracted to the lone pair over here and it's going to let go of that oxygen. And this is the kind of stuff that um, organic chemists do a lot. They, they draw those little curvy arrows and they talk about where the electrons are going. Um, but the result of that is carbonic acid. So carbon dioxide in water will form carbonic acid. Cations can act as Lewis bases, I'm sorry, Lewis acids. So we learned that small, highly charged um, metal ions like aluminum 3 plus and iron 3 plus can be acidic. So what happens here, they've got empty orbitals because they've lost all their valence electrons. So here the Lewis acid can accept electrons from the Lewis base. And so we can actually have six of these water molecules um, forming coordinate covalent bonds with the aluminum. So there the um, aluminum is acting as a Lewis acid. So Lewis acids are not a big deal in this course, but there I have officially taught you about Lewis acids. Okay. Any questions?